Welcome, thanks for coming. Um, in this workshop, I want to talk about LabVIEW for C++ FRC programs. So the basic idea here is I want to give some information, not necessarily opinions, although I have them and I will try and keep them to myself. Um, I want to give as much information as po possible. So for people who chose to use C++, or C++ for the 2009 competition year, um, they can get some experience about what LabVIEW is, kind of dispel some myths, or at the very least, provide some key information. I'm going to talk very briefly about myself, talk a little bit about the idea of technology religion, um, and emphasize a couple points about how we can teach students to evaluate platforms. It's actually an interesting opportunity to allow students to decide whether they want to use C++ or LabVIEW. It's a great opportunity to learn and to learn how to evaluate. I'm going to talk a little bit about continuity of tools. Uh, many of us started with FLL and then progressed into FTC and then on to FRC. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different tools at each of those levels and how they feed into one stream or another. I'm going to talk a bit about the key differences between C++ and LabVIEW. Uh, I'm going to talk about four key things. Uh, first is the environment, programming environment. Uh, parallelism and multi-threading, which is uh, an interesting feature of LabVIEW, one which can be a real pain if you don't know what's going on, and one which can be a tremendous benefit when you do know what's going on. We're going to talk about the benefits of how you can debug in LabVIEW, and a little bit about the way you do vision in LabVIEW. And then I'm going to go through an advanced code example. So in this case, what I'm going to do is go through the code that the team that I mentored developed. We're going to talk a little bit about where to go for more information. So again, about me, my name is Ben Zimmer. Um, our company is called Enable Training and Consulting. That's our website, enabletc.com. Personally, I've been a LabVIEW programmer since 1994, so probably about as long as a lot of people who are programming LabVIEW out there right now have been alive. Um, about three years ago, I formed this company, Enable Training and Consulting, and we do not surprisingly, training and consulting. But our key focus, from a technological point of view, is LabVIEW. We do LabVIEW contract programming, we do LabVIEW consulting in the automation industry, test and measurement, and more recently, we've been doing a lot of online training. So that's what led us to develop the website, lvmastery.com. So on lvmastery.com, we have three different industrial intended courses. So people who are out in industry working with LabVIEW can purchase access to our courses, watch these online videos in their home, in the office, anywhere, and learn how to use LabVIEW interactively. In August, I learned that LabVIEW was going to be an option for the first robotics competition and the first technical challenge this year. Um, and this is the first time, this is actually my rookie year as involved in FRC. <coughs> so I've been using LabVIEW for a very long time and it's really exciting for me to have a chance to pass on some of the things I've learned um, you know, getting dirty, fixing machines, being underneath automation machines, working on that kind of stuff, fixing that kind of software. It's the same skills that you guys are learning out there for FRC. So it's very exciting for me. And in addition on lvmastery.com, we created what's called the tip jar. And this is a video blog that I created. Um, there's about 13 entries, ranging from 15 minutes to 30 minutes long. In the end, we created about six hours of free tutorials which are available for FRC users. You can just take a look at it, go to lvmastery.com and follow the links and you'll find it. And that takes you from the very beginning to you know, how to open the joystick example on the, on the Compact Rio to some of the more extreme, some of the more advanced applications, some of the more advanced examples, which I'll show you a little bit later on. So the key purpose of this, of this presentation is to provide information for the 2010 software platform decision. So again, like this here, you have the choice between Wind River C++ and Lab. So I've talked to a lot of teams, both at several regionals and here in the finals, and I, I asked, whenever I introduced myself, I said, I say, hi, did you use LabVIEW or C this year? And actually, about two-thirds of the people are using LabVIEW this year, which, which I think is great, because I'm a LabVIEW person, I'm a LabVIEW expert, that's what I do, I think it's fantastic. Um, but for people who did use C, the most common answer as to why they used C was we had a programming team that was most comfortable with C. 
whether that was students or mentors or teachers or some combination. And quite often when it was students, there's a follow-up comment, but they're mostly graduating this year. All our programmers were seniors and I'm losing them all. So there's an interesting opportunity now to, meet, to, to make this decision for 2010. So what I want to talk about now for a couple minutes is how to teach students how to evaluate. Right? It's actually not trivial to make this decision. Do you spend a year learning how to be a C programmer and a year learning how to be a lab programmer and make the decision? No, you don't have that time. Do you just open up a couple screens and say, this one looks prettier, I'm going to choose that one? No, I mean, there has to be some middle ground. So I'm, I'm recommending a couple points on how to make this decision. So the first is, Realize that this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for an important and a challenging activity, a really great training activity for your students. And there's a term that I like to use called technology religion. And it's basically this idea that I believe in this software, therefore this is the software I believe. I prefer tool A because I already know it or we have a license for it, or our mentors and teachers know it. So my recommendation is to break free of this concept of technology religion, to evaluate both options. And here's a four-step process. So number one, it's a programming language. It's a programming environment. So the first thing you have to do is compare the environments. <laughs> which has some advantages you prefer, which has, has disadvantages, which might pose a problem. Secondly, really importantly, how does it work? Compare the utility in certain tasks that are irrelevant to the task at hand. In this case, programming an FRC robot. Number three, evaluating the skill set of the team. You can't forget that I've got six programmers and they're all C++ experts. Does it make sense to make them all learn LabVIEW when you can hit the ground running? Maybe not. And the reverse is true. If you've got students who grew up, who did FLL and used NXTG, who then did FTC and used LabVIEW there, does it make sense to transition into C++ for FRC? Maybe not. So you can't discount the, the skill set of the team. But it's one of several points to look at. It shouldn't be the only point. And lastly, perform a comparison test. Say, let's do a simple example. I want you to make the 2009 robot or the 2008 robot, make it move, reprogram it, based on what it did in 2008. Do it in C++, make notes about what you learned. Do it in LabVIEW, make notes about what you learned. Keep track of how much time it took. Keep track of the problems. That way you're making an informed decision based on real data. Any questions up to this point? So some points about how to compare environments. Well. We're calling libraries, we're calling the WPI library to access all of our peripherals, to read from inputs, to write to outputs, to turn on motors, all this stuff. So how easy is it to use those libraries, to find them? How easy is it to access the help files? Are there help files? Are the help files easy to understand? These are all environmental issues. How about how easy is it to navigate the environment? Is it hard to find a chunk of code? Is it hard to change code? An important point, how easy is it to debug? Right? We've all, I mean, certainly the team that I've worked with closely and some of the other teams that I've helped, debugging was a critical point. It becomes tremendously important that the tools that you choose make it easy for you to implement what you need to do. And lastly, how usable is it? You know, is it really a hindrance? Or is it really make life easier for you? So what I'm going to do now is a very quick 10-minute demo. I'm going to create a basic FRC project using LabVIEW. It might not even take me 10 minutes. What I'm going to implement is arcade drive with a third motor, which is simulating some sort of ball pickup mechanism and which is triggered by a joystick. And I'm going to activate this so that that third motor is available in the autonomous mode. 